forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Jesus said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Exodus. Then God spoke these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me. 
but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, or your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident of your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land of the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from Corinthians. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since, in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided, through the foolishness of our proclamation, to save those who believe. For Jews demanded signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and a foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are the call, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning and welcome. This morning's Exodus reading is one very familiar to us both in the church and the faith, but also in the broader culture. For many hearing this passage, it conjures images of Charlton Heston, or my personal favorite Moses, Bill Brooks, in History of the World, in which we learn that there are more than 10 commandments, but the third tablet got broken. There has been much made of this passage of the Ten Commandments over the centuries, and that's for good reason. We have ten easy to remember commandments of do this, okay, don't do that. But on the surface, it seems just that, that it is a do this, don't do that. There is more going on under the surface here of the text. When we read it in the context, of the biblical Exodus narrative, but also in the broader biblical narrative as well. Here we find the Israelites and they have been brought out of Egypt into the wilderness. And the, this passage finds them in Mount Sinai. Moses goes to the mountaintop and communes with God. The people are left behind at the foot of the mountain. And there Moses receives commandments from God. And then Moses gives these to the people. In Exodus, God leaves God's people out of bondage into the wilderness. Gives them this list, which to our modern ears may seem a little strange. We wait to hear from God what God has for us, and we get a list of ten things. But in the context of the ancient Near East, the civilizations there Commandments were given regularly in these types of lists, not unlike what is given here. These lists were often derived from the common wisdom in the ancient Near East, where in some instances they were coming from on high from a king. In the context of the biblical narrative here, these commandments are literally coming from on high, from God. God is giving the commandments And that's what differs here. It's not coming from an earthly temporal power. It's coming from God, God's people. This is because God in Israel, God has called God's people into being in relationship with God. This relationship between God and the people was established with Abraham by means of a covenant in Genesis. This covenant means that this bond that was made is unbreakable because it is between God and God's people. Since God has made this covenant with Abraham and God called Israel into being, these commandments were given to ancient Israel. 
to know how to live in community, how to live in community with God as God's people, but also how to live in community with one another. These commandments tell them how to live in this relationship with God. And so there's two halves to this, or two different sets of commandments. They're not to have idols or other gods before God, because the God who's called them out of Egypt led them and is present with them. So they're to honor God in that way. They're not to make wrongful use of the name of the Lord. They are also to rest on the Sabbath, for when God created everything, God also rested. By following these commandments, they honor God and live in right relationship with God. And then the other half of the commandments. These are the commandments of how to live in relationship with one another. And yes, they may seem to us kind of basic things. They're to honor their parents. They are not to murder, commit adultery. They're not to steal. They're not to bear false witness against one another. And they shall not unduly want something of their neighbors. But by following these commandments, they honor one another in this community as the people of God. These commandments here are given to ancient Israel for the building up of God's people, and in fact, to flourish. Now we know from the biblical narrative, they didn't always get this right. And in fact, at Mount Sinai, the people made an idol of a golden calf, going against that first commandment. And as the biblical narrative continues, there are many instances where Israel does not fulfill these commandments by both individuals and also the community as a whole. Israel fails at times to fulfill the commandments to honor God and also to fulfill the commandments to honor one another. The prophets in the biblical narrative come along and they call Israel to repentance time and again, to turn away from the things they are doing that are taken away from these commandments, away from the relationship with God and one another. They have marred their relationship with God in the community. The community, time and again, forgets to care for one another. They forget to care for the widow, the orphan, and the stranger, the poor, the hungry, those who are naked. And this is expelled out in the prophets, in Jeremiah, Amos, Micah. They speak of this over and over. And so the prophets call the community for repentance. Repentance requires them to ask for forgiveness of their wrongdoing, to confess what they have done wrong, and then that allows them to live in right relationship with God and each other. So what makes these commandments so important is that by living according to these commandments, they live as God has called them to live, which is to love God and love each other. In the Gospels, Jesus comes along, who is a prophet in his own right, as well as the Son of God, and Jesus calls the community again to account, to live according to what was given to them in the law. And in fact, Jesus summarizes these Ten Commandments and everything that follows. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and to love one's neighbor as yourself. This is the summary of what has come before at Sinai and everything following. And this is still what it means for the community of God to live. And Jesus fulfills this law through his death and resurrection. He fulfills the covenant made with Abraham, fulfills what was given at Sinai as a perfect example, 
and establishes a new covenant with Jew and Gentile alike. With this new covenant and the fulfillment of the law, the commandments have not ceased. They are still important. And nor has the covenant with God, because God is faithful. Each generation, both in the biblical text and in our own lives, receives this commandment. And at the heart is that foundational relationship with God. These living according to God's commandments is important because of that existing relationship. There are many times we fail living according to the commands that God has given us. And we mar our relationship with God and each other. A church like ancient Israel has not and does not live to these commands. That is why we repent and we ask for God's forgiveness. We repent of what we've done that has dishonored God. We repent of what we've done that dishonored one another. How many of us can think of times when the church has leveraged and abused its influence? How many times have we erected our own idols, both in our own personal lives and our faith, but also in our church community? There's the abuse of power and idols in place of God. And then this filters through and impairs how we live in relation to God. It then impairs how we relate to one another. And so we can get overly attached to things such as our physical buildings, as important they are, and the continued preservation. We can also get trapped in nostalgia of how things used to be. We can get attached to the need for accumulation of money and the preservation thereof. We can get attached to influence or power. This can come in various forms, whether it be white privilege, heteronormative thinking, ableism, patriarchy, to name a few examples. These are all things, when we place them in place of God, mar our relationship. All these lesser gods ultimately drive us away from living in community with both God and with others. And God has called us throughout time to be the people of God, people who are known to be loving examples in the world. As the people of God, we have our being from God since God has called us into community. We're called to live according to these commandments for the building up of the community. But we don't live to these commandments. We repent. This time in the church year, we set aside a set amount of time to recall who we are, and who God has called us to be. And where we fall short, we repent and confess. And we do this over and over. But the miraculous thing is God does not give up on us. God's love is perfect and steadfast. In the prophets, there are many times where God says they, God could have just done away with Israel at any point. But God doesn't, because that covenant was made. God's love is steadfast. So during this time in Lent, we take this time to examine our relationship with God, both individually, in our hearts, and the way we live, but also as a community, when we gather together to pray and read the biblical text, we read and hear of who God has called us to be. People who love God, and people who love and honor one another, like living in right relationship with each other. And so we hear how we are to live into this calling. And by living to God's commandments, we honor our relationship with God. And we love and honor one another. Amen. Let us join together in the words of our faith, saying the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Faithful God of love, you blessed us with your servant, Son, so that we might know how to serve your people with love, justice, and mercy. We gather the needs of ourselves and others and offer them to you in faith, seeking to be strengthened to meet them. For the church, that our Lenten hunger may be for care and compassion, and that we will continue to be a community of welcome and love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For all people of faith, that we will see through the sin of self-involvement and rejoice at the call to love God and neighbor, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our communities, for our towns and cities, for the Commonwealth of Kentucky and the United States, that those who hold power over others may be troubled and transformed by the demands of justice, mercy, and love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer for exiles and refugees, for the homeless and those whose homes have been destroyed by war, greed, and disaster, that you will protect them and will act to care for them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of this community, especially those affected by the flooding and the winter storms, and those needs we name either silently or aloud, To you we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the joys in this life, especially those joys that surprise us in the midst of hardship and struggle. To you we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially those who have died in the coronavirus pandemic, that they will continue to rejoice in the eternal life and love of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, shape us and transform us by your grace, that we may grow in wisdom and in confidence, never faltering until we have done all that you desire to bring your realm of peace to fulfillment. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to the third Sunday in Lent. We are halfway through this season of Lent and we continue with our Lenten program at 530 this evening, Journey Through the Holy Land, where we will talk about the spiritual power of mountains in our story of faith. 
We also have evening prayer with the Bluegrass group every evening at 6.30. So if you would like to pray evening prayer every night or on select nights, you can just join any of the Facebook pages of the churches involved. St. Michael's is on Tuesday evening, so you can pop on over to our Facebook page and join us across the bluegrass in prayer, a reminder that even though we are apart in this time of pandemic, we are held together in prayer. If I want to make a personal plea and reminder that yes, I realize the positivity rate is dropping. I realize and thankfully that so many of us are being able to get vaccinated. And when you are able to get vaccinated, please do so. If you are having trouble getting online or maneuvering through the different sites, Call the church office. We will help you get signed up so you can get on this list. But please continue to wear masks. Please continue to social distance. Um, this pandemic is still ongoing. And as one of our wonderful members who is a doctor reminded me, while this rate seems really low because of the spikes at Thanksgiving and Christmas, this is the very high rate that we were so concerned about last July. So we are still in the midst of this pandemic we still all need to take precautions and act in love and kindness for the least of these in our community. And those least of these are essential workers who are keeping our grocery stores stocked and keeping restaurants going. They are those among us who are have illnesses or physical realities that make them more susceptible to disease. So please, please continue to make decisions that help us move through this time of pandemic um, and in that vein, please also know that your vestry and I and Father Kenny and Father Jesse are beginning conversations about what the next steps of our life as um, a worshiping community will look like. But what I can tell you that I've heard from our vestry and I am thankful to have this kind of leadership, we at St. Michael's care about those who are most vulnerable in our community. That is who we are as a community. And any decision that we make regarding in-person worship will be made in light of those who are most vulnerable and most susceptible to the devastating impact of this pandemic. Uh, so please continue to pray, please continue to wear your mask and physical distance, and please continue to know that we are together as the body of Christ, even because we have video. I'm so thankful that we've had this opportunity. So a shout out again to Ron and Tracy for faithfully uh, videotaping and editing and particularly editing out the parts that probably don't aren't safe for children to see in our videos. We celebrate our birthdays and anniversaries and life events of our members and friends this Sunday and we especially celebrate the birthday of Sharon Hogue who's our past senior warden. So Sharon, happy birthday. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator and sustainer of all life, Bless, preserve, and guide your children as they mark another year of life in you. Make their hearts ready to receive your love and free to love others. Grant them grace to grow into the fullness of Christ. Strengthen them, give them joy, and awaken them every day to the power of your saving help. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept all we offer you on this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
together in the words our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Look mercifully on this your family, Almighty God, that by your great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 